everybody and welcome to my channel, Yosip here. Uh, just now I was on a meeting with a friend, we were discussing some creative new ways to start some future projects. And in general, that is the life of a filmmaker, constantly brainstorming new new ideas. That can be intimidating to some people, but for me that's the, one of the best parts of, of being a filmmaker. But that's not the topic that I want to talk about today, that I'll leave for some future videos, so make sure to subscribe. Today I want to talk about the topic that came by itself because a lot of people from the previous video asked me uh, oh what camera did you use? A lot of people who know me asked me did I use this camera the FX3 that I'm filming with right now but that trip was a few years ago so I used this the Sony a6300 and the 18 to 105 f4 lens which is a power zoom the Sony lens. I wanted to be lightweight on that trip because I didn't go to film for somebody, I didn't go on some kind of project, I just went for myself on that trip, I needed that trip. And uh, I took this, I took a small gimbal and that's it. Like one SD card, a couple of batteries and that's it. Some people would consider this not to be a professional camera because it's an APS-C sensor, I don't know, the low light, especially with this f4 lens, like it's not, it's not holding up, but the best part is of filming documentary style of video outside is that you have daylight, uh, the ISO can always be on 800, which is the base ISO for S-Log3 in this camera, and that's actually the convenient thing that I did with this camera, is that uh, I shot everything in S-Log3 on that trip. Usually at that time I used PP4, Picture Profile 4, because at the time I didn't have a 10-bit camera and I usually was afraid of the S-Log in these little things because as soon as I put it in Premiere Pro and start editing, uh, the picture would fall apart. But maybe a year, year and a half ago I switched fully to DaVinci Resolve. Before, maybe four years ago I, I started color grading in DaVinci Resolve, but... Uh, the crashing of Premiere Pro lately and stuff like that, it just pushed me to fully go to DaVinci Resolve and I took the footage that I recorded and I was amazed because it didn't fall apart as much as I thought it would. Of course, I couldn't push it too much, but you have to be careful with the edits. But still, uh, the dynamic range was there and it, it was usable, like see the footage for yourself. Well, some people would then ask, why did why did I upgrade to the FX3 if this has good footage and stuff like that? Well, let's be honest, this doesn't do everything. Like, you have to know how to use this camera to push the image and to, to utilize everything that it can do. But that can be so stressful from time to time. Plus, uh, for some commercial shoots, I needed a super clean image, and for music videos, I needed 4K, 10-bit, and slow motion, which these cameras couldn't do, and couldn't do until the FX3 which and the A7S III, which did overkill, and uh, did 4K 100 frames, 120 frames per second in 4K. If you don't need a super clean image, this is perfectly usable. It has the dynamic range, but it falls apart in the shadows, so maybe some real estate videos won't be good with this. But on the other hand, if you're doing some creative films, uh, music videos, and if you don't need more than 30p, this is perfectly usable. A lot of people used this camera with the 18 to 35 a Sigma art lens, which is perfect combination with this. And they did incredible music videos, what I saw. That's why I want to talk about the five things that you can do to your older camera that can revitalize it, that can also spark that uh, creative need in you to, to go outside and to just film. So this might seem a bit simple, but learn everything there is about your camera. Uh, for example, the menu system, uh, the specs of your camera because when you go on a shoot sometimes you're gonna have to push your camera to its limits and if you don't know how your camera behaves in those kinds of conditions um, it can ruin your shoot like the footage is going to fall apart and then when you come to the editing room you're gonna look at that footage and see that it's not usable this second one is actually quite interesting try new lenses for example try anamorphic lenses 
tri tilt shift lenses. These lenses are going to define the style of your videos. Point number three might be similar, but it's more of a budget version. Buy vintage lenses. When we watch old movies, psychologically that uh, engraved in our mind an image a specific aesthetic so you can go on ebay and find all of these vintage lenses and adapt them point number four use filters that's actually essential for having a good image a lot of people go and buy expensive equipment they buy expensive cameras they might even cheap out on the lenses and they don't know how to get that quote-unquote cinematic look well, you have to use an ND filter. You have to stop down your shutter to get that motion blur. To get a specific aesthetic, you have to get Pro Mist or, or Glimmer Glass because the modern sensors are so sharp and if you want that filmic look, well, films weren't that sharp. You have to put some kind of filtration in front of the lens so you can retain detail but soften your image so it looks like a movie. And the last point that actually isn't even connected to your camera. If you're stuck, try a new editing software. Try new plugins. See what you can extract from the videos that you record with your camera gear. So those are my five ideas. If you have anything else, comment below. But in general, I'm not the type of person that would say, oh, camera gear doesn't matter because it does. That was kind of a mantra for a few years on YouTube that camera gear doesn't matter. You can use this and this. True. But if you need something for your photo shoot, for your video shoot, if you need 4K 10 bit, some cameras don't provide that. But if you do not need that, then don't buy the next camera that comes out. See if you actually need that. Because if it was true that camera gear doesn't matter, we as filmmakers wouldn't exist. Uh, the client expects you to come to a photo shoot, to a video shoot with the best equipment possible and the knowledge to use that equipment. That's why we are professionals, because we have the knowledge to use professional cameras for professional photo shoots and video shoots. Listen, but if you buy new equipment constantly, just because it's new, not because you need it. Eventually, you're gonna struggle financially and that situation is gonna tire you over time. I was in that situation too. So be wise, uh, learn new things constantly and if you need, buy new equipment. Until next time, see you.